Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to discuss about how we can manage data quality in Delta Live Tables. Now we are already working with the Delta Live Table pipeline. Today we are going to set some data quality rules on that pipeline and we are going to see how Delta Live Table manages those. Now in Delta Live Table we have something which are called expectations and expectations are some optional clause that can be used to manage the data quality. Today we are going to see three type of actions that we can perform using expectations. The first one is warning which is default, the second one is drop and the third one is fail. Now expectations are optional data clauses that you can apply on the DLT data sets that would make a data quality check on each of the record that is passing through the query and we are going to see that with an example today. Now before we can begin if you have not seen our previous video where we have already built this DLT pipeline please go ahead and check out that video first. So without any further delay let's begin. Now I am in my Databricks workspace. We are going to use the same DLT introduction notebook that we have been using since the beginning for our DLT pipeline code. I have already backed up the code for the previous video that we have created as backup part 5 and we are going to use the same setup notebook for some prerequisites that would be required for our data quality check. Now in order to start with expectations the first thing that we need to do is we need to define some rules that would be used for data quality checks and in order to do that let's get into our DLT introduction notebook. So I'll quickly get into this notebook now. So I'm back in my DLT introduction notebook. The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to define some rules that would be used for data quality and to define those rules we would use Python dictionary. So first I'll define some rules for orders data. So I'll give the name for the dictionary as order rules and within the dictionary we will define some rules. First thing that we need for an expectation is the name of the rule and that should be unique. So the first rule that we are going to define is valid order status. Okay. And the second part that an expectation required is a valid rule. So our rule for valid order is O underscore order status in and we are going to provide three codes. The first code would be O and the second code would be F and the third code can be P. Okay. So if we get anything other than order status O, F and P, so that would violate our data quality rule. Okay. So this is one of the rules. Now let me define one more rule for order. So what I'll do is I'll name the second rule as valid order price. Okay. And the rule for the order price would be O underscore order price and that should be greater than zero. Okay. So if we get a negative order price, it simply means that this rule is violated. Okay. Now these are the two rules that I'll define for order. Let's go ahead and define one rule for customer. For that I'll name the dictionary as customer rules. Okay. And within dictionary would we'll define the name of the rule which would be valid market segment. And the rule for market segment would be C underscore MKT segment is not null. Okay. In order to maintain the data quality of customer, we will define the C market segment as not null, which will make sure that we get valid market segments. Okay. Great. Our rules for orders and customer are complete. So we are going to validate two rules for orders and we are going to validate one rule for customers. Okay. Now, in order to use expectations, we need three things. The first thing is a valid rule name. The second thing is a valid rule. And the third thing is an action. Now, you can have three types of action with an expectation. The first one is warning. The second one is drop and the third one is fail. Okay. Since our rules are ready, let's go ahead and write our action. So the first action that we are going to use is warning. Okay. So I'll quickly scroll down and where we are reading the data for orders, I'm going to add the expectation here. Okay. Now in order to add an expectation, you can just go ahead and use the DLT decorator. So I can write at the rate DLT and I can use a dot notation and I can write expect. Now if you have only one rule defined, you can go ahead and use expect. But if you have more than one rule, then you have to use expect all. Okay. Now Within this, you need to provide the name of the dictionary where you have defined the rules. So for our orders, we have defined the rules at underscore order rules, right? So I'll quickly copy this and I'll paste this. Okay. So now if we run this pipeline, it is going to look into all of the rules, but the default type of rule is warning. It means even if the rule fails, it is not going to drop or fail the pipeline. Rather, it is just going to log how many records has failed because of this expected rule. Okay. And this is the default behavior of expectations. Okay. So let me just add it here in warning mode first. So I'll just put a comment here called warn. Okay. So right now it is in warning mode. Okay. Let's go ahead and add the same rule for customer as well. So I'll quickly scroll down where we are reading customer. So this is where we are reading customer. Let's go ahead and add the expectation here. So I'll write at the rate DLT dot expect and I can use all. Okay. And I can give the name of the customer rules. Right. So let me just scroll up and copy the name of the dictionary scroll down and paste it here 
okay so our expectation is ready this is going to validate the data quality okay so now we can go ahead and trigger our pipeline but before that we need to add some data in order to see that okay so i'll quickly switch over to my setup notebook i'm back in my setup notebook now we are going to add some records in order to test data quality okay now in orders we have defined order status should be o f and p so if you see the third column i have added some records like na or null for order status so this would violate our data quality rule okay the second data quality rule is order price should be greater than zero so let me just make it greater than zero okay so this was the rule that we set now if you see the second record we have added an order price which is less than zero which is minus 100 okay so all of these three records violates our data quality rule okay for orders now if i scroll down for customer so for customer we have set a rule where the market segment should be not null okay and in this record we have set the market segment as null okay so when we insert this record and when we run our dlt pipeline all of this data should violate our data quality rules and should be flagged okay now since we are using the expectation action as warning so all of this record should only be flagged but not dropped or the pipeline should not fail okay so let's go ahead and set this records first so let me quickly run this awesome all records are inserted successfully before we can run the pipeline let me quickly switch back to the dlt introduction notebook and let me show you one more thing so for customers we have defined our rules at dlt view okay so you can also use views in order to define your expectation rules now for orders if i scroll up you can see our expectation rules were defined at the table okay so this was a table orders branch where our expectation rules were defined but for customer we have defined it at the temporary view level so you can go ahead and use both tables and views in order to define your data quality rules now our prerequisites and our rules are all in place let's go ahead and trigger this pipeline so i'll quickly switch over to my dlt pipeline and before we can do that let me go to settings and i need to change the product edition to advanced so i'll click on this and i'll select advanced now the data quality and the expectation features are available in the product edition advanced okay so i've selected advanced here let me go ahead and save this and now it is done let me just go ahead and click on start so our pipeline has started and it is waiting for the resources i'll pause my video here and we'll come back when the pipeline is up and running okay our pipeline just started and failed in the initializing step so it seems there are some error in order to debug let me just open the event log here and i'll quickly click on this failed message and now i can see the column name which is o underscore order price this is not the correct column name okay the correct column is o underscore total price so let me just copy this column name from here i'll close this i'll quickly go back to dlt introduction and i'll quickly scroll up and i'll change the rule here okay so i'll paste o underscore total price greater than zero so this is the correct rule now let me go back and start the pipeline again so i'll click on start and let's just wait for this to complete awesome our pipeline execution just completed so let me just expand this ui first and if i zoom a bit and you can see we have incrementally read one record for customer and if i scroll down you can see we have read three records for orders right now if i click on this orders branch and if i click on this data quality now you can see the metrics which defines how many records has failed for the data quality issues and you can see for the valid order status we have two failures and for order price we have one failure right so now you can see the data quality metrics right here in the ui for dld okay now one thing you notice is the action if you see the action is allow it means even if the rule fails the record will be inserted in the target okay so this is why the mode is warning it means it will just give you the stats saying that this many records has failed but it will not drop or fail the pipeline so let me quickly switch over to setup notebook and now if we run a query over orders union which is the next step after the data insertion for the order key 9999 for which we have inserted the data quality right so these are all 9999 right so if i run this you will see the data is present in orders union so let me just go ahead and run this now so if you see the order status is any o and null okay so even if the data quality rules failed but still the data is inserted and this is what is the warning mode okay so let's go ahead and change the mode to fail so for that what i'll do is i'll quickly insert the same records in orders okay so i'll just change the value to 999 and i'll add an extra nine here okay and i'll quickly run this again great all three records are inserted i'm not going to show it again for customer it is same as that of orders okay so i've just inserted three records again in order to see the data quality but this time we'll set the expectation as fail okay so i'll quickly switch over to dlt introduction notebook and i'll quickly scroll down to orders and this time if you see this is expect all right and i'll add one thing here i'll write or fail it means the rule will expect all the data to be valid or it will fail okay so whatever order rules will not follow the data because of which the data pipeline would fail okay let's go ahead and rerun our dlt pipeline so i'll quickly switch over and i'll click on start so since we are running our pipeline in development mode the pipeline will quickly start so i'll just wait here for the pipeline to be up and running 
awesome now if you notice our pipeline just failed at the very first step at the orders branch okay you can see the status as failed so let me quickly expand the event logs from bottom and if i click on this you can see it has failed because an expectation check and even you can see the failure record here okay it has failed because of this demo one expectation test where you can see the value is any so this is how you can put data quality rules where you have to fill the pipeline if it does not suffice your requirement and it will provide you the failure message in the dlt event logs as well so let me just quickly close this and now we will change our expectation action to drop okay it means if the record suffice the data quality rules they will pass and get loaded into target table if not the records would be dropped okay so let me quickly switch over to dlt introduction and what i'll do is i'll quickly change this to okay and let me just quickly go ahead and run this because since our records are already inserted and our pipeline failed so those were not read using incremental pipeline right so if i rerun this pipeline it is going to read those records as well okay so let me just quickly go back and click on start now our pipeline is running let me just wait for it to complete awesome our pipeline just completed so let me just quickly expand this so i'll click on this and i'll fit it and i'll zoom in now if you see we are not reading any incremental data for customer but we are reading three records for order bronze so if i click on this if i go to data quality now again if you see the action is dropped and we have dropped two records because of order status and one record because of order price okay so if i quickly go back to setup notebook and if i change the order key to 99999 and if i run this again now in orders union branch you don't see any record inserted because those records which were not according to our data quality rules were dropped okay now you can see those status here mentioned in the expectations now let me show you one more thing if i quickly go back to the pipeline that we run previously okay so this was for the failure this was for the warning okay so let me just go into this pipeline and if i click on customer branch if i go to data quality you can see the number of failed records is two but you might be thinking that we only inserted one record previously right why there are failed two records this is because two of the streaming tables are connected to this view okay so the data quality metrics that has been reported for this view is one for this streaming table one for this streaming table okay and the same record was violating for both the streaming tables and this is why you can see it has mentioned two as failed record and that is because that record would be used for two of the flow the first one is scd1 and second flow is scd type 2 and this is why it is showing you the action is allow and fail records is two okay now you very well understand how you can use different type of expectations in a dlt pipeline now you can define more than one expectation rules in a single data set for example you can define both for customer and for orders all of the rules within this view joint view okay so let me just do it so i'll quickly go back to dlt introduction notebook and i'll cut this from here and i'll paste it in here before the joint view okay let me just add the expectation for customer as well so i'll just scroll up and i'll copy the expectation rule for customer and i'll scroll down and i'll paste it here okay so if you see we have two rules defined one is for warning and one is to drop okay and both rules are now defined on the joint view now we can use the variety of rules on the same data set which is our joint view now before we go ahead and trigger this pipeline let's go ahead and add some data which violates the data quality rules okay so i'll quickly go back to my setup notebook i'll scroll up and i'll add one more nine here and i'll quickly insert this awesome three records inserted let me just go ahead and add one more nine here and let me just insert the customer data as well awesome data inserted for customer as well right let me just go back and click on start so this pipeline is starting i'll pause the video here and i'll come back when this pipeline is complete awesome our pipeline just completed so let me just close this from the sidebar and let me just expand this and if you see here we have read one record incrementally and we have again read three records okay now if i click on this join view now if i go to data quality you can see the valid order status we have an action of drop and four records were dropped okay for order price two records were dropped okay this is because after joining this is happening and this is why the number of records has increased okay let me just click on all you can also see the valid market segment but if you see the failed record is zero this is because you can see the join is happening between customer and orders and for that particular customer we don't have any records in order so that is why the join is not happening and this is why you see the fail record as zero but still you can see the action is allowed so you can see how we can define different type of expectations and different type of actions at a single place in a single data set okay so now you understand how you can define expectations in a dlt pipeline now let me show you one more thing so in order to monitor a complete pipeline we can use sql queries and even you can create dashboards out of those sql queries so let me quickly show you one page here now this page is monitor data live table pipelines 
you can go ahead and check out this page. I put the link in the description. In this page, you can find several queries that you can use in order to monitor your DLT pipelines. So let me just quickly scroll down. And now if you see, we can use a particular query in order to see the event logs directly. Okay. So if I scroll down below, and if you see this query, select star from event log and you can put the pipeline ID here. Okay. So let me just copy this query from here. Let me go to setup notebook, scroll down to bottom and let me just paste the query here. Okay. And I'll change the pipeline ID. So I'll go back to my DLT introduction pipeline. Let me just click on the main view and let me just copy the pipeline ID from here. I'll go back to setup and I'll paste the pipeline ID here. Okay. Let me just go ahead and run this now. Awesome. Now, if you see, we can go ahead and query our event log directly from our notebook using this SQL query, right? You can go ahead and use this function called event log, put your pipeline ID here, and it will give out all of the event logs for your DLT pipeline. We can go ahead and use this as well in order to query and monitor our DLT pipelines. Now, for that, the query has been already provided by Databricks. Now, if I scroll down a bit, you can see there are some queries that can be used to create views in order to use it. Okay. So let me just copy this first. So I'll create a view called event log raw here. So I'll copy this. I'll scroll down and I'll paste it here. And now I'll quickly change my pipeline ID. So I'll scroll up, I'll copy this from here. I'll go down and I'll paste it here. So I'll just change this portion here. Okay, so I'll quickly run this. This is going to create a view called event log raw. Okay, so let me just go back to web page, copy the next query. So I'll just copy this, which will create a temp view called latest updates. So I'll go back, I'll paste the query here and I'll again run this. Awesome. Our temp view is also created. Let me just go back and now I'll scroll down quickly to a section called query data quality. Okay. So I'll just copy this from here. This particular query will help you to monitor all of your data quality rules. Okay. So I'll just quickly copy from here. I'll go back to my setup notebook and I'll paste it here. Okay. Let me just go ahead and run this now. Awesome. Now, if you see, you can see all of the data quality failures that happened in our previous run. Okay. You can see order status, the number of failing records are four. For market segment, it is zero. And for order price, it was two. And now you understand how you can use these queries in order to monitor your DLT pipelines and also the data quality rules. You get the passing records, the failing record, and the type of expectation as well. Okay. And now you can also use these queries to create dashboards in order to monitor those dashboards for your DLT pipelines. So, Today, we understood how you can use data quality rules in DLT pipeline, how expectations make your life easier in order to manage those data quality rules in DLT pipelines, and how you can use several SQL queries in order to monitor your DLT pipeline directly from notebooks, or even you can create dashboards. I hope you have learned a lot of things about DLT till now. In our next video, we are going to see some more features about DLT pipelines. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, and keep sharing.